Hello and welcome to Talk of Green Game. It's just finished West Ham United 1, Arsenal 5. Gonzo, how disappointed are you feeling right now? Uh, it sounds terrible, but I was strangely resigned to it, to be honest with you. I was almost chuckling at the end because it was so ridiculous. They, they, were, they, were, they were just walking onto us. I was surprised it wasn't 6 or 7, to be perfectly honest with you. It was, it, was a, it was terrible. It was really, really bad to watch. And obviously all the fans started walking out after 78 minutes. And you may have noticed, joined with us tonight is the guy that scored that goal in the FA Cup on the way to the Millennium Stadium in the FA Cup final. Marlon, what did you make of that performance at London Stadium? Oh, well, it's hard to say really, but um, I, what I can say is that Arsenal did look good, obviously, and the, the, the situation that West Ham were in at the moment, they don't need that, so they need, they need to... I need a team that's not playing the best and uh, need to go at them and try and get a result, but it didn't really happen today. Did the Arsenal play that good though, or did we make them look that good? Um, <laughs> I'm a bit of a 50-50 guy, so but um, Arsenal did look good, um, and it, it, was, it was hard for West Ham because the, the, when you're at the bottom and you're fighting for everything, and you need something to go for you, and, and just today weren't nothing weren't really going for them at the. And when they were playing against a team that's um, looking sharp and looking to go and to win a game, it was hard for them. Before, before we talk about the game bit by bit, what, what I'll just say to you, Marlon, is you were a striker. Surely watching that, you must be looking at Ashley Fletcher thinking, how can he influence this game? The guy's feeding on scraps during the game. Yeah, it's hard as a striker. You need you need people around you. And I, I did feel sorry for him because he didn't get much. And when he did, he, he, try, he tried his hardest to try and produce... Um, to try and score a goal for the for the lads and try and help them out, but it's hard on it's hard on him and it's hard on the team. But when Arsenal's going at them the way they did, it's it's it's, it's hard for everyone. What does, what does it feel like though, as a striker being in a team like that, where you do get fed scraps, you come off the pitch after a thumping? He must be feeling like there's nothing else he could have done to contribute to that performance. I wouldn't say it's just him as a striker. You feel disappointed in chances. I think that it would be a whole team feeling disappointed. I don't think they'll go out there wanting to lose, and they definitely would, would, would try their best. But Arsenal, Arsenal was on it today, as the score shows, and um, it was it was a hard day for them in the office. So they just have to go back and try and see if they can rectify it. But well, one 0 Gonzo, it was it was coming, wasn't it? It took a defensive error in the end, but it was coming. It was, and it was. It was a simple goal. It was a well, simple squared ball uh, tapping at the end. But I thought that we'd set our stall out to maybe not concede a goal, and then perhaps bring Andy Carroll on in the second half. Um, and that didn't really work out. By that time, you're sort of chasing the game. I actually, I actually thought that Lanzini it sounds ridiculous after that sort of scoreline. I thought Lanzini was really involved. He was. Um, it was dictating things to a certain extent. And also, Pyatt's going to get a lot of stick today. There's no doubt about it. Pyatt will get a lot of stick. But they've got that sort of telepathic understanding, him and Pyatt. And I was just thinking, if they could just get combined into the game more, what you were talking about with Marlon, we might be able to get Fletcher involved a little bit more. And it just didn't happen. It's, it's, it's almost like the game slipped away from us. I can understand Bilic's tactical plan, but it needed to be nil-nil at half-time, bring Carroll on. And then, well, he actually showed a little bit. First of all, he, he, won, a, he won a header and he, he won a knockdown as well. And It's very, very frustrating. In the, in the first half, what was frustrating for me was we were getting into the final third. Fletcher was in the box. But for some reason, we were playing tippy-tappy football along the side of the box. But no one was crossing the bloody ball. Fletcher was in there thinking, just give me the cross, give me the cross. But we weren't giving it to him. And I just thought, and when we did give it to him, it was so, I don't know, so half-hearted cross. It was such a floated effort. that Petrček came out and We only had one effort in goal in the first half, and it was Payet's 25-yarder, which went miles over the bar. It was just, it's some, for me, it summed up West Ham's performance in the second half. But Marlon, the second half, that was just like lamb to the slaughter, wasn't it? Well, you worded it like that. Towards the end, it was a bit like that, but they still tried to, to try and push on. It's just... At this moment in time, the, the, where they are, the position of the league, it's, it's very hard. I, I've, I've been in that situation and not really things go for you. And when a team, obviously when you're playing a top team like Arsenal, it's going to look ten times worse than what it's going to be to a normal team that's around where West Ham is at the moment. So when you're playing a top team like that, it's going to it's going to make it, everything's going to make it look worse than how you're playing and stuff. But they just have to regroup and start um, going to the drawing board and start again and try and, try and pull some pull some results out. 
the, the second half, Collins, well, you must be watching through your fingers, were you? I mean, it finished 5-1. O, uh, Ozil scored in the first half, but Sanchez got two. He made them look qu quite easy in the end. Oxley chamberlain got one where the defence defense stood still. The defence stood still, though. They did. It was the mannequin challenge for the defence, to be fair. But um, they, they sort of... Um, they. He bent that in lovely, Oxley chamberlain to be fair. He's a very, very good player. I also thought it's easy uh, to criticise all the players. I also thought Obiang tried his best. Obiang was really tackling well in the middle of the park. But I think I think we got um, we got problems in the middle of the park. We need someone to load the ammunition. We desperately need a striker up there. But yeah, I was well funny, I wasn't watching through my fingers, I was watching through a, a camera in many respects, and I was watching all the fans leave quite early it's not all we needed and Liverpool are up next which is Jurgen Klopp has got his team playing very very well I did think that the, the team was still playing for Bilic though it's going to be very very easy to to criticise him and also I'll tell you what I thought actually in the second half because you're sort of looking for positives and it was bad I'm not going to try and paint a different picture when Ayu Ayu looked really good when he came, he's clearly a technically very good player and I'm not sure if there's not a formation or something somewhere you can involve Payet are you in Lanzini? Look, cause we're certainly you can't avoid the relegation talk because we're we're down there. But I I I've got a thing. I don't know. Marlon's you know a professional footballer. He might know more than I do. I'm a plumber for goodness sake. But is there a way to get Lanzini, Payet, and are you operating in a way that that would push it up because they're good players, certainly better than bottom of the league players. I I, I struggle to see what evidence are you seeing out there tonight that suggests that they're playing for Bullets. What what is your evidence? I, I actually did think there was a little bit of effort there. I thought they were, I thought they were playing to a team plan. You know, I travelled up to Manchester for the game. You know that, and I didn't see a lot of evidence of it there. So I was expecting it to be insipid and worse than it was. But I think today Bilic tried to do nil nil, as I said, until Carroll came on, and I thought they were trying to do that plan. But I, I just think they weren't. They weren't particularly good, but you could see Reed was really trying to tackle hard. Obiang was 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 really trying to play. Masuaku came on for Cresswell. Masuaku's not as good as Cresswell. We know he's not, but he he really he really tried. I thought they were trying, but it wasn't good enough. I'm not saying it was good enough. It wasn't. It was it was rubbish. There's no doubt about it. But I do think they're still. Try I don't think Bullet has lost that old thing. Marlon will maybe explain better than me. I don't think that that cliche they've lost a dressing room has happened yet. I'm not convinced it has either. But they weren't trying out there. I don't believe that at all. They were coming. It looked like that 14 players on the pitch at one point they were coming forward in the numbers and our defence our defence was outnumbered on the edge of our 18 yarder for God's sake and that's when it was 2-1 and 3-1 it looked like the team had just given up that they thought you know what I'm not going to track back at the end of the day our blower was, had Monreal going past him Oxley Chamberlain going past him the poor boat was looking around thinking who the hell is helping me here and you look ahead of him Payet, Lanzini, Ayu, Fletcher they're all standing on the halfway line and now I know you don't want them back defending but against Arsenal, you can't take that chances. You can't give their attacking players that much space because they showed tonight, you give them half a yard, they will punish you. And they punished us out there tonight. They could have had 10 tonight. I think I generally think they missed enough chances in that first half especially that they could have they could have had double figures tonight if they were on form and they took all their chances. They could have had 10. It was just shocking. Am I, am I being harsh? What does, what, does Marlon, what does Marlon think? Do you think there's a formation in there with our current players that can that can get us better than well, where we are? Um, well, <laughs> I was just listening to you, the way you're talking, and obviously you're passionate about West Ham, and it's it's hard to see you know, the position that you're in at the moment, but I, I still, when I was in there, I still feel that the lad's still um, working for the manager, and it, it's, it's really hard when you're down there. Obviously, as a fan, you just see, obviously, the outcome of the game today. I'm, I'm not judging anything. Like, it is a bad result for West Ham and West Ham fans, but... They, 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 they're still top players and they still will pull something out of the bag I have faith in them because everything's new I'm not using it as an excuse though but <clears throat> like you said watching that today from a fan you, you'll be very very disappointed coming away with a, with a result like that but I can, I can still see them pulling out it pulling it out and getting together and uh, because I know a know few of the lads and I, I think that all of them do care so they will be trying the hardest to try and get themselves out of the situation. I believe we've got enough talent, but do you hand on heart, Marlon, do you hand on heart believe every single player that was on that pitch tonight for West Ham, do you hand on heart believe that they gave 100% out there tonight, every single one of the players? Yeah, it's hard. It's 110, 100%, however effort you want to say, but when you're playing a team like Arsenal, it, it, you, it's going to be hard, full stop, no matter whatever you do, your heart, because they, they, they look good. They look like a team that they're going to do something. And a West Ham team at the 
the moment is trying to find their feet and trying to push on to try and get up the table. That they're in a position at the moment that is a very, very hard position. There's a lot involved in being where you are and trying to get out of it. And once they get that, that little spark to get out of it, they will. But the playing at we're going on result today. They're playing Arsenal and they're on fire at the moment. That that in that in that form they can beat anyone. So it's a hard hard game to, to 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 talk about. Obviously the result doesn't show anything, but it is a hard game to talk about when Arsenal are playing like that. Gonzo, what's your, what's your your thoughts on the game overall as such? I mean, we've just got beat five one. We're it's Sunderland have won today. We're a point above the bottom three. We're away to Anfield in a minute. Are we in a relegation battle? Of course we are. What was my prediction? You remember we did the preview. What was my prediction? What did I say? I don't remember. <laughs> that's because you've drunk too much. It was 4-1. My prediction was 4-1. So that's no surprise to me, OK? That's no surprise at all. Sanchez is a genius. Payet is a genius. Sanchez is Payet with attitude, with application, who, who basically with consistency, if you want. That's why Payet costs 15 million and Sanchez costs 36. If you were to sell Sanchez now, he'd cost 50 million. That's what you get. He's got that work rate, he's got that work ethic. O Ozil is a genius, he gets criticised, but you can see he dictates the game. When he went off, even though it was really late in the game, I thought it was absolute, thank goodness. I think that is a blessing um, the, the game is over. I think it's a real problem that we've got Liverpool next because Jurgen Klopp has got them playing and he's got a system. Even with Coutinho out, they're going to cause us problems because Firmino plays well. Um, Mane, who they signed for Southampton, is a great player. And actually, you can see him. Do you see that James Milner was benched last time for the last game? Yeah, he was up on the bench cheering. They've got a cohesion. That's not the problem. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I personally think, Billy, if we lose to Liverpool and then have a bad result against... Burnley or Hull I can't remember which one's next if that it, it, which one is it Hull Burnley, Burnley. Burnley I think he's gone then and, and I'm sorry to say that because I like him he's a really nice guy well, well this is what I'm going to say the difference I see between us Sunderland Burnley Middlesbrough there's no desire in that team out there I've seen tonight there's no heart and for some reason Bullets took off the only player with heart and desire he took off Mark Noble and all of a sudden we just lay down. Now, Martin Noble is not the best player in the world, but he's taking, you're taking off the he's only guy that will, will... He will bleed Claret and Blue if you cut him open. He will die for that team out there. He took him off, and all of a sudden we had... I don't know, almost like players that were too fancy. They can do tricks with the ball, but they won't put in a tackle. They won't graft. They won't trap back. But Burnley have got that. Middlesbrough's got that. Sunderland's got that. That, that really makes me worry. The difference between us and the teams at the bottom is they've got grafters. It's coming up to the winter months. It's going to be an ugly, horrible fight at the bottom of the, of the league. But I'm almost starting to think, do we have the players that are up for this ugly, horrible fight? I think the other teams around us do. Do we have better players than them on paper? Of course we do. We've got Payet. Payet is world-class. Ozil is world-class and Sanchez is world-class. How, however, only two of them three world-class players turned up today. And it wasn't our player. Dimitri Payet didn't turn up today again for the second day in four games. He just uh, For the second time in four days, he didn't turn up. Ozil did. Sanchez did. That's the difference between us and the rest of some of the other teams in the league, I suppose. Marlon, do you think we're in a relegation battle? Um, well... The league shows it, don't it? You don't have to ask me that question. You already know the question. Until we start pulling the full results uh, together, then we are in a relegation battle. Um, it's, it's hard. It's, it's Christmas time, isn't it? It's halfway. And when you're at that down at that halfway, um, any footballer would tell you it's hard to get out of there now. And, and obviously now he's going to have to pull pull the lads together, talk to them, and see where they go from there. What's the best best solution? How they're gonna how we're we gonna move forward now? Because this obviously this is the second half of the season now. They're gonna have to start pulling some results out. As a professional player, you said earlier you've been in this situation before. At what point do you start looking at the manager? Do you ever look at the manager and think you ain't the man for us? You know, at the end of the day, he's the one picking the team. He's the one dictating the play. So as a professional footballer, do you ever question a manager, whether you do it publicly or just in your head privately? Yeah. At what point do you start looking at the manager thinking, I'm not convinced? Oh, well, no. I don't, I, I, I'm not a believer in looking at the manager, really. There's 11... The manager sits on the line, obviously he picks the players, and there's 11 players that goes on on the pitch in any team, Not obviously not just West Ham, and... Um, it's up to them to go and to produce whatever team he plays whatever formation he plays doesn't really matter it's just going to be a matter about the 11 players that go out there and how much they want it so it's nothing to do with managers picking teams or whatever at the end of the day it's 11 players against 11 and whoever wants it the most is going to win the game is, is there any players that you think are letting West Ham down whether it's today or the season so far I mean like you said we are down at the bottom we're 17th in the league or whatever 
why are we there? If it's not, if you don't think it's a manager? No, well, no, we've got some top class players there, so it's it's just it's how they want to how they want to go and produce really, and what they want to achieve out of life. It, it, like from my days and the players that we had in our dressing room, they, they, that that situation would never be in doubt because we have a team bonding. We talk to each other. If there's anyone that needs to be dug out, they'll be dug out. If they needed to pull the finger out, they pull the finger out. They get told and look after each other. If someone makes a tackle and he was on a yellow, that person knows he didn't need to make a tackle because someone else will make a tackle for him. So just to let that other person know you're in the game, you can't just do that to my mate and get away with it. And because you'll, you'll be you'll be told the next time. And I understand what you're saying about heart and stuff like that because from where I come from and nobs and stuff like that, that the heart, the, all the hearts from the lads is there because they will be implemented implemented to all the other players. So it's it's there. Yeah, it's just obviously it's it's hard when you're not when you go in the league because everyone wants to beat everyone and at the end of the day the 11 players on the pitch is going to go in to do it and they're not doing it at the moment and they need to start pulling some results out to get them back up in the league well we'll, we'll get the final thoughts from these two in a wee second but while you're here make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're watching embedded on our website it's youtube.com first last hammers chat Come give us your thoughts on the forum. Let us know in the comments below. Do you agree with Gonzo, myself and Marlon? We've all got different views here. But Gonzo, what's your final thoughts before we finish this off? We're in trouble. We're in a relegation scrap. I think the players are still playing for Billich, though. Um, I think we need a reshuffle. I think we need to sort something out. We probably need to sort something out in January. But I do think if it gets to Hull, which is the next... I think if we lose to Liverpool when it gets to Hull, and even if it's a draw against Hull, I think Billich will probably be gone. That's my final thoughts. Marlon, what's your final thoughts on the, on the day? my final thoughts what I've seen of the lads and how disappointed they are in the in the result today going off today I think they're going to try and pull it out and I think they will do um, with games to come we've got some really tough games to come if they start pulling a few few wins out and a few draws and a few good for performances clean sheets and I think we'll be alright yeah I, I've got no doubt in my mind I've got no doubt Billich is the man for us I'm starting to question the players actually I'm starting to look beyond the manager and think do you want to be here and do you want to be here and if not you know, get out the team get players on the pitch who do then, want to be then here there are 25 players Let, let's be clear about it if some players don't want to play there are 25 players there and, and let's be perfectly clear we, Zaza didn't play today you would hope that I mean Fletcher what, what attitude he, he really tried his best today and, and he looks like he's got the attributes to, to be a decent player he's got a good physical frame um, Carroll's coming back there are some positives I do think we're better than a relegation team let's get that straight I think Swansea lost 5 Lille today I, you know, having said that we've lost 5-1 sort of looking at Swansea thinking they've been fresh we've been fresh I don't know but, uh, do you know what I'll, I'll duck out here but um, you three, know, you know. three teams go down not one three teams go three down teams, three, I, I still think we've got more than that but something something needs to change and I'll tell you what if there's someone in the squad that's not doing it as I say there's 25 players there's a, there's a there's another midfield that is we've got to have someone in the academy if you know to, to come from maybe we see a bit of Reese Oxford or Reese Burke or somebody like that I don't know we'll, we'll have to see Samuelson possibly let's, let's let's have a look at the youngsters if the seasoned pros aren't doing it but they've got one more game they've got to go to Liverpool they got to impress there against a very very good Jurgen Klopp team well it doesn't get any easier for West Ham we're away to Liverpool next weekend at Anfield We've been waiting all season for a striker to score and they've come along just like buses. Three games, three strikers have scored, but somehow we've only drawn one and lost two. We've been waiting for strikers to score and we've still not won a game with them scoring. But we'll be back with the, in, during the next week with the previews. Make sure you join us. But Marlon, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week.